In the fall of 2019, I found myself standing on a dry lake bed in what seemed like the middle of nowhere with a group of women I had only just met. And as we're standing on a makeshift flight line on this dry lake bed, we are joined by what we consider one of the greatest communities of folks, the aviation community. With hundreds of people standing on either side of us, we are cheering as two bush planes race by. One of the pilots is Nat. She's a woman who flew her bush plane down from Canada, and she's one of 16 pilots to make it through the qualifiers, and only, the only woman to do so. As I'm cheering on Nat with this group of women that I actually met through the power of social media, I stop to take in the moment. This group of women that I'm with and cheering on is made up of flight instructors, graphic designers, medical doctors, engineers, airline pilots, writers, and lifelong students of aviation. But we're even more than that. We are the 7%. The 7% of pilots that are female. In the US, only about 7% of all pilots are female. Canada is only about 5%. It's a staggering statistic. And while I could stand up here and say we need more women, what I really want to get at is that if you are a female, you should get while well, the getting is good. And if you are a parent of a young daughter, now is the time to get her into an airplane and watch her life change. Because the opportunities for the minority in this industry right now are unending. And the benefits of a pilot's license are limitless. Before we talk about the benefits of a pilot's license, let's talk about the safety aspect. Because I hear a lot of people express concern about safety in a small airplane. <laughs> The fact that the plane is smaller does not seemingly make it any less safe than a traditional airliner you might find yourself on. The forces of flight are the same regardless of the size of airplane. Airplanes are designed to fly. They're designed to fly when systems fail. Airplanes want to be in the sky. In addition to the fact that we're flying machines designed to be in the sky, pilots are trained to always anticipate any factor that could result in a need to land the plane unexpectedly. Getting your pilot's license is not like learning to drive a car where they give you the keys after a short test and say, good luck, make good choices. <laughs> pilots are trained to always anticipate the unexpected. I cannot tell you how many times my flight instructor killed the engine on me mid-flight and asked me what I was going to do, forcing me to react. It is integrated into our training to always have a plan. I still fly with my first flight instructor, and I like to keep an eye out for a hand slowly making its way for the throttle, because I know he's going to pull it and test my reaction to a simulated engine out. The training involved via pilot is designed to ensure that although it is rare, if something were to go awry, you have been equipped with the tools to land that plane as safely as possible. This training is why pilots, such as Captain Schultz and Captain Sully, were able, to, were able to bring their planes down to safety despite the unexpected damages to their aircraft. I think fear of flight comes from a lack of understanding how flight works and how much design goes into making an airplane fly and sustain flight. My first experience with flight was on a major airliner. It was a relatively short flight, but I was absolutely terrified the entire time. I hated it. What I would learn later on was I wasn't so much afraid of being in the sky. I just simply don't do well with not knowing what's going on. I work as a manufacturing engineer, and my career is based on understanding how and why things work, defining and controlling processes. Control being a keyword. I like to be in control of my situation. It wasn't until I was gifted the experience of flight in a small airplane that I fell in love. I was sitting in the cockpit with a yoke in front of me, fascinated by an instrument panel that was relaying everything I'd want to know about what the aircraft was doing. There's a common phrase that says, ask any pilot why they started flying, and you will probably hear a similar love story. When those wheels lift off and you're airborne, it's like something in your soul stirs deep, and this part of you that you never even knew was missing has finally clicked into place. It sounds a little cheesy, but it's true. It is a true love affair with flight and with freedom. I got my pilot's license when I was 25. You only have to be 16 years old to solo an airplane and 17 years old to get your pilot's license. I cannot imagine where I would be right now had I started flying 10 years sooner. Another common concern is, well, how much is this going to cost me? And this is where being a minority comes into play. 
We live in a time where the need for women pilots is so high and the issue of gender equality is so prevalent that the support to get women in the air to raise that 7% statistic is astounding. Use your minority status to your advantage. Encourage your daughter to use it to hers. I used it to mine and I still do to this day. Every year locally and nationally, there are scholarships offered to women specifically to learn how to fly. Just in Reno alone, we have years where thousands of dollars of scholarships go unclaimed. Or even if we do have applicants, sometimes your odds for that money are one in four, if not better. There are scholarships that will pay for portions of your training. There are scholarships that will pay for all of your training. There is so much money out there for women to learn how to fly. If you are willing to take the time to prepare and submit a strong application, there is no reason you won't find yourself winning some of those scholarships and supporting your flight training. Aside from scholarships, the power of networking can open up many doors in the aviation realm. The community is one of a kind, and it is filled with people who want to see others make it to the sky. Encourage your daughter to turn wrenches in a maintenance shop on airplanes. She will see and learn about countless different types of aircraft and will likely find herself flying on a fair share of them. Spend time at your local airport. Join local aviation organizations. Meet other pilots. Being a female interested in aviation is interesting to other pilots, but you have to show up. You have to break out of your comfort zone and start intentionally meeting people. Use the power of social media. Brand yourself as a female pilot and watch the connections begin to grow. I've met so many phenomenal women in aviation that continue to support and encourage my path. I've also met a lot of male pilots who are just as supportive and encouraging. Engaging in the aviation social media community will connect you to countless people who want to share the love of flight with others. Make those connections and you will likely find yourself racking up priceless experiences. Aside from the cool factor of being a pilot, there are a multitude of benefits to having a pilot's license. I can speak from personal experience and the experiences shared by others. I asked a large group of women what they would say if someone asked them why their daughter should learn how to fly, and the response was overwhelming. Well, why shouldn't she? She will learn confidence in how to overcome her fears. It will help her excel in math and science. She'll develop independence and self-esteem. It helps with critical thinking and decision-making. The list went on and on. One woman even shared how flying helped her overcome the traumas of sexual assault that flight training helped restore confidence in herself and took away the feelings of worthlessness. Your daughter will learn invaluable skill sets in life lessons learning to fly an airplane, and these skill sets will prove useful whether she decides to fly professionally or not. Now, most people can only think of a handful of jobs that would necessitate a pilot's license, and the most common is an airline pilot. Other professional flying jobs include flying for corporations, being a test pilot or a flight instructor. You can fly for the government, such as the military, the forest service, the police department. There's care flight, there's search and rescue, there's firefighting. However, getting a pilot's license doesn't always mean flying professionally. Some go into a career such as engineering, aviation management, aircraft sales, airport operations. Some go into a career that has nothing to do with aviation, but the skills they use and continue to hone as an everyday pilot are undoubtedly used in their everyday life. I mentioned earlier that I work as a manufacturing engineer, and I do so in the aerospace and defense industry. And I just fly for fun. But I use my personal knowledge of aircraft and the skills my training taught me to problem solve in my everyday job. Add pilot license to a resume, and it is an immediate attention grabber and conversation starter, especially if you are a female. Going back to that dry lake bed, Nat didn't win the race that day. She didn't even advance in her bracket. But she did fly home with $2,000 in her pocket, and she did so in part because she was the minority. A couple of months before the race, one of the event organizers put out a message, and he said, I want to see more women racing, so I will personally give $1,000 to the fastest female racer. Doesn't matter if you actually win the competition, it just goes to the female with the fastest time. One of the event sponsors liked that emotion so much that they matched that $1,000 and it became $2,000 for the fastest female racer. You know how many women showed up to race that day? Three. There must have been over 30 pilots who participated in the qualifiers and only three, less than 10% were women. That means that day, those women had a one in three chance at $2,000 in cash. Pretty good odds. Nat worked hard to show up for that opportunity, and she earned it. 
I wasn't really in a position to be racing that day, but I was still kind of kicking myself <laughs> for not taking that opportunity. And the woman standing next to me, they are grabbing their minority status by the horns and taking hold of every opportunity available to them as women in aviation. They are networking. They are engaging in the community. They are giving back. They are working hard and reaping the benefits of that hard work because they have a love affair with flight and the freedom surrounding it. I have a seven-month-old daughter. She's my first. And the desire to protect her is overwhelming. The desire to see her succeed far beyond anything I will ever achieve is just as great. So yes, I will encourage my daughter to use her minority status to her advantage and to work hard at grabbing hold of every opportunity available to her as a female. Because I know that when she takes her first solo flight and it's just her in the airplane, she is going to experience an indescribable feeling of accomplishment and empowerment that only comes from the gift of flight. I encourage everyone, women and men, to investigate aviation, but I specifically encourage the women to go take a discovery flight and experience something you may have never even thought to try. And parents, if you have young daughters, please encourage them to investigate the world of flight. Being a minority in the aviation industry is actually a one-up on everyone else right now. I encourage all women, especially the younger generation, to use that. And go fly! 